Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed Easter to everyone and welcome to worship here at First Lutheran where we're called to celebrate and share the loving power of Jesus Christ. It is wonderful to worship with you this morning as we gather to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Of course we gather differently this year than we have any other year but that does not make our joy any less because Christ has risen from the dead and he has conquered all things, even death, and he has given to us the promise of everlasting life in his name. This is the feast of victory for our God, Alleluia. You gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, 
And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And this time we invite the young people to come forward for their special part in our service. And we know some of our young people are watching at home. I saw Retton Hartley the other day, saw Britton the other day, and saw Luca and heard from Hannah and Will. So hello to all of our young people who are watching us this morning. Well, happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. Easter. How are you guys today? Good. Good, good. So what is it that we celebrate on Easter? You guys remember? The resurrection of Jesus. That is exactly right. Well, I have something fun today to help us remember about Jesus rising from the dead. I have an egg. And sometimes we think of Easter eggs and all that stuff. Mine's kind of plain, but you can see that it's a real egg, right? A real egg. Now, I need a volunteer. All right, Nathan is going to volunteer. Now, we got to have a little fun on Easter, even though it's a little different this year. Why don't you stand up, Nathan? And I am going to smash this egg. Why don't you turn around so people can see how excited you are for this? (laughs) I am going to smash this egg over Nathan's head. You think this sounds like a good idea, Sophia and Ben? All right, you ready? We got this real egg. We're going to smash it over Nathan's head. You ready? One, two, three. Why don't you go like this, Nathan? There's nothing there. (laughs) What's the deal? The egg was empty, right? We do that little trick to remind us today that the tomb was empty on that first Easter morning. Jesus' followers had come to the tomb that morning, expecting to find his body there, but the tomb was empty because Jesus rose from the dead. And that is what we celebrate, of course, at Easter, that Jesus, who died for us on the cross just a few days ago on Good Friday, has risen to new and everlasting life. And because he rose, we too will rise with him and live forever with him. So we celebrate on Easter and we remember the reason for our celebration. It is that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. All right, let's close with a word of prayer. If you'll fold your hands and bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear God, God, thank you for Jesus, Jesus, who is risen from the dead. dead. Help us to trust in him. In In Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you guys very much for coming up and thanks for volunteering, Nathan. The first reading is from Colossians, the third chapter. If you've been raised with Christ, Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering 
never changes what you see i've tried to win this war i confess my hands are weary i need your rest mighty warrior king of the fight no matter what i face you're by my side when you don't move the mountains i'm needing you to move when you don't part the waters i wish i could walk through when you don't give the answers as i cry out to you i will trust i will trust i will trust in you truth is you know what tomorrow brings there's not a day ahead you have not seen no so in all things be my life and breath i want what you want lord and nothing else when you don't move the mountains i'm needing you to move when you don't part the waters i wish i could walk through when you don't give the answers as i cry out to you i will trust i will trust i will trust in you i will trust in you you are my strength and comfort you are my steady hand you are the firm foundation the rock on which i stand your ways are always higher your plans are always good there's not a place where i'll go you've not already stood when you don't move the mountains i'm needing you to move when you don't part the waters i wish i could walk through when you don't give the answers as i cry out to you i will trust i will trust i will trust in you 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 We will now read Psalm 118 responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we continue with the Alleluia verse for the Gospel Acclamation. Matthew, the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. 
For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said greetings and they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The gospel of our Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our crucified and risen Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen. A little story to begin this morning. Five-year-old Johnny was in the kitchen while his mother made supper. She asked him to go into the pantry and get her a can of tomato soup, but he didn't want to go in alone. It's dark in there and I'm scared, he said. She asked again, but he was scared. I don't like going in there. It's dark. Finally, she said, it's okay, Johnny. Jesus will be in there with you. Johnny walked hesitantly to the door and slowly opened it. He peeked inside, saw it was dark, and started to leave without the soup when all at once an idea came to him. And he said, Jesus, if you're in there, would you hand me the can of tomato soup? We all have fears. There is no doubt about it. We all have fears in our lives. And sometimes these fears do get lower. They get a little better as we get older. Maybe that's the case with the fear of the dark that we have when we're young. Sometimes, though, our fears get worse when we get older. There are, of course, a million different things that we can be afraid about. And we don't usually have to look all that hard to find them. And now we have one great big one added to our lives and to our world. This coronavirus continues to spread around the world, around our country, and now too more so in our own local area here. And it causes us to fear. We are anxious about the future, anxious about our loved ones, anxious about our own health too. We come to this Easter Sunday and we have fear. There are things that we are afraid of. There is no doubt about it. And Jesus speaks to us today in our fears. The risen Christ says to us, be not afraid. I am here. It is I. That is what he told the first witnesses of the resurrection. That is what he told his two followers named Mary who came to the tomb that morning. He said, do not be afraid. And he says the same thing to us as well. Do not be afraid. But yet we still do. There is no doubt. I know I still do. I know I still have fears. I think we all do. And that is why I do like what it says here about the two Marys who are the first witnesses to the resurrection. It says that when they receive the good news of the resurrection, they are told to go and share it with the other followers of Jesus. And it says that they go, they go to share the good news. But it says that as they left the tomb, they left quickly and they were filled with fear, but also with great joy. They are filled with both fear 
and great joy. Even after they were told the good news about Jesus rising from the dead, even after though, even after they had been told not to fear, it says that they left the tomb with fear and great joy. Fear and great joy together. That is what those two witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus experienced that first Easter morning. It was fear, but it was also great joy. And I think those two things together, those two things at once are a pretty powerful combination. We have fear. That is part of what it means to be human. And in these days, I think our fears have grown. There is no doubt about it. But the good news of Easter and Christ rising from the grave is that in him, we also have reason for great joy. In Christ, we have joy because he is risen from the dead. He has forgiven our sins and he has called us to new and everlasting life in him. He has overcome all things, even death. And he has called us to share in the joy of this promise that he gives to us. This promise that he is alive. He is risen from the dead. He has overcome all things, even death. And he is with us always. He calls us to know this joy in him, even in the midst of our fears. It isn't one or the other. We can experience both. We can feel both. But the more we feel that Easter joy, the more we come to know the promises of Christ, a promise so great that it can conquer all things, even death, as we come to know that promise more and more, the joy grows in us and the fear does become smaller. I don't think the fear will ever go away, at least this side of glory. But there is so much room for joy. And there is so much reason to rejoice. Jesus Christ is alive. And he is in our lives and in our world. And calls us to follow him. To new and everlasting life in his name. For he still says to us, as he said to his followers, that first Easter morning, do not be afraid, it is I. Thanks be to God. Amen. And let us now sing together two verses of Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds.
let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment now to share the peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ in whatever way you can. And may you know his peace now and always. And now it is the time for offering. Of course, we will not do that as we traditionally do, but we do thank everyone who has continued with their faithful giving, either through simply giving or through uh, mailing in their offering envelopes or bringing them to the church. We thank you very much for all of your generous gifts. And we ask you to take a moment now to think about, too, how you can offer yourself to God as a way uh, to share of yourself in these days. We're going to take a moment now and to hear from the bell choir. This is six of our bell choir uh, members who recorded an Easter song for us. now continues with the offertory, the doxology. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all according to their need. God of all power and might, we give you thanks and praise this morning for raising your son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Open our hearts to the power of his resurrection and make us bold to witness to the hope that this glorious event brings to us and to all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of your people, the empty tomb is our very reason for being as your church. Teach us to remember his death and resurrection with our faithful witness to him. Help us at this time where your church around the world is unable to gather in person, to stay united with you and with one another, and teach us to continue to be the body of Christ together. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of the resurrection, as you raised your son from the dead, may you also raise up all who grieve and all who suffer. May the glory of this Easter morning bring hope to those who are sick or suffering and courage to those who live in fear. We remember those around the world who are suffering from the coronavirus and also those who are grieving the loss of loved ones because of it. Grant them your healing and your strength. And we remember those from our midst as well who are in special need of your care. We pray especially for Dave Peterson, Roger Hildy, Leah Grove, Bob Nelson, Joan Algidio, Janet Holt, David King, Bob White, Tiffany Taylor, Roger Hoover, Addison Holmes, Marlene Rye, Pat King, Gary Lance, Saul Headland, Travis Aspie, Ken Taylor, Karen Birch, Barb Wills, Dave Helders, Kathleen Johnson, and servicemen and women, Jacob Schmidt, Bryce Hopkins, Aaron Flottam, Nathan Flottam, Amber Matheson Swanson, Samuel Swanson, Dwayne Waddell, Matt Bold, and all who serve. Visit them with your power and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you now and forever.
thank you again for joining us for Easter worship this morning. I'd like to thank Ben and Sophia for providing special music. Emily again for uh, doing the recording and helping with all the technology. Jeff for doing the veil. Betsy for reading. Nathan for acolyting. And Sally for playing the organ for us again today. You're all welcome to join us for Coffee Fellowship on Zoom. That'll be at 10 o'clock and I had sent out uh, the invitation for that with my morning email. And now let us go in peace to serve our risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank mm -hmm. you.